Hello everyone, welcome back, KJ4YZ. I'm with Ham Radio Concepts. I hope you're already subscribed and give me a big like on the video just for the effort of coming home after a long day of work and making a video for you guys to watch. Now, I wanted to check this out more in detail because I don't think that I learned enough about it when I was at Dayton Hamvention. Gigaparts was selling these and it's more than just an HF clock. That's what it's called, okay? But this is I what I call a Wi-Fi enabled or internet enabled information station for your shack. This will tell you a lot of different things. And I might have said in the video that it was built on a Pi or a Raspberry Pi, but it's actually not. This thing is an entire information system, computer here, that is built on an Espressive ESP8266 processor. So not just someone like they said in the comments on the last video, they said, oh, that's just a touch screen with a Raspberry Pi built in. No, that's not it. And I wanna see that. I wanna see more about this and all these features. You wanna know about the weather in another country? You want this thing to track a satellite for you? Do you want it to have the time accurate up to 10th of a millisecond? Right here is the answer. Now, to show you what a clock is, I'm gonna show you what a clock is. Now, this I've had on my desk a while. I've had this for a couple years, and then the wife took it about last year. She said, I'm tired of looking at the clock on the wall, and it's slow, or the battery dies, and I can't reach it to change it. So she took this. This is just a regular MFJ atomic clock. If you want just a clock, that is just a clock. This thing will do nothing but tell you the time in different time zones. However, something like this, as I said, will update by itself, it will automatically show you uh, uh, weather in another part of the world when you touch on it. It'll show you uh, the Passover or flyby of a satellite, pre-programmed satellite, uh, azimuth and elevation. It's all in here. So I call this the internet-based information station. We're gonna take a look at this right now. All right, it's not a Chinese wannabe ripoff thing. It's actually made in the USA. I'm gonna open this with my grandfather's father's knife that's about 100 years old. Hopefully I don't cut myself. Maybe I should go that way. We have some information here that tells about the different models that they have, okay? Instructions are in here, all right? So it's got a, like a quick nifty guide here and it's got some information, a color printed manual, okay? Let's see. Yes, that is pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna go through that. We're not gonna use the manual because I like making videos when we're not using the manual because I wanna see if I was a complete newbie what this thing's really about. So inside here, and this is in a tiger, they call it a tiger maple frame, okay? Now, at the time that I heard this thing coming out, I know that I heard there was a couple different models, but this is the nine inch touchscreen color tiger maple wood frame, okay? And uh, this thing is more than just a Raspberry Pi slapped into a wood frame. Let me tell you, this thing feels solid. And uh, internet clock based system by WB0, OEW, and N2TBN. Pretty cool. I'm also gonna tell you about this sensor that's in here, okay? That's an optional module I'm gonna tell you about, but let's really get this thing started and see what it looks like. Okay, so upon plugging it in, it comes up and asks you if you wanna enter setup mode or recalibrate the screen. I entered setup mode, and basically I'm going to put in the SSID and the password of my Wi-Fi, the call sign, and my latitude and longitude. That should be everything for my station. So with the touch screen, let's see very responsive on the touch screen. To give you an example, it's almost like an iPhone, uh, not like the FT2DR Yesu where you kind of had to, you know, it seems really fast. So the way this looks like it works is the top of the key here is lowercase, the bottom is capital. So if you want capital E, push the bottom of the E. See, that's pretty neat. There's my SSID garbage, and then enter. My password, um, well you don't need to see my password. Now it's connecting to garbage, so let's see what happens. Okay, connected. 
and it asks me if I want to update. I'm going to hit no right now because I want to play around with it and see what it's got in it right now. Okay, so the next page it comes up with asks me which satellite do I want to track? And I did not realize there was this many satellites out there and I haven't played with satellites or looked at them in a while. So I'll pick one. I'll pick, uh, I don't know, uh, SO50, I guess. And hit OK. Okay, so a lot of stuff here happening on this screen. Wow. A lot of stuff. Uh, it's different looking at this thing instead of playing with it at busy Dayton Hamvention. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So let's try to break it down and look together on this little map symbol key I have, and I'll explain it to you and show you how it works. So the first thing I want to show you is on the bottom, it seems there's a RSS feed. This is like a headline or a news ticker on the bottom that can be turned off. Some people don't care. And some people want to see, you know, the new things that are coming up. It's taking that from the uh, server online and it's putting those on here. So if you happen to want to see the Coral Island from dxnews.com, you can go there or you can turn it off. Okay, so nice big picture of the world map there. And what I can notice is you have your gray line here in real time. That's darkness coming over here. That's light coming over here, dusk, dawn. And the red line would indicate that satellite, that's SO50 that I picked, uh, and the track of that with the footprint and current position of that satellite. So pretty cool if, you know, for satellite enthusiasts that are waiting, but it's hours away and you don't want to forget with this thing on your desk, it'll kind of remind you, oh crap, the satellite's coming, you know, and you'll see the footprint and, and uh, make the contact. So on the top left here, I have my call sign, my IP address, the uptime, the, uh, UTC and date here. So that's all fed over the internet right here, up to date as up to the tenth of a millisecond. On the top here, so these things can be manipulated. See, like you have your uh, percentages of, you know, band conditions, right? So like this is telling you 80 meters right now, there's zero percent chance of making a contact, you know? And you can click that and change it to a sunspot number, you know, uh, sunspot numbers here, click it, go to the solar flux. You know, I myself don't, you know, and I want you to get this, you know, like I'm saying before, I don't open the internet and look at the sunspots and say, oh, bands are dead. I always call CQ, but this helps for those who really want to see what the, you know, uh, solar weather is doing. You can click up here and change that to the, you know, band, this is band conditions here. This would be solar uh, sunspot number, and this would be a solar flux. And then over here, you have your x-ray uh, index. You know, you have your yeah, x-ray here, band conditions, so I could have the solar flux here and the band conditions here. Okay, over here, you have your, uh, you, could, you could put a picture of the actual sun here to look at the sunspots. Check that out. That's pretty cool, right? That's pretty neat. I think there's another one on here. Yep. So that'll show you visually the sunspots um, on there, you know, different graphs or images. Over here, it'll show you your satellite. Uh, that's the one you're tracking. So if you forget which one you're tracking here, SO30 or SO50, the rise is in 41 minutes. And if you click that or tap that, you could change the satellite to another one. So let's say you wanted uh, AO92. AO92. Okay. And there you go. Now that'll update. So you don't have to restart it every time to uh, check out the satellite. Okay. Okay. So I changed this to the ISS. Here's the International Space Station there and the uh, rise time and all that. So it even shows you like it'll go from the northeast to the southwest, I guess. Um, the past, you know, pretty neat stuff. Okay, so here's something cool. Here's a little interactive part for it. So let's say you're on the HF radio or even on D-Star or DMR and you're talking to somebody and they happen to be in Australia. So, you know, the first one of the first things we ask is, you know, what's the time? It must be uh, tomorrow morning over there, right? Or what's the current weather conditions? And a lot of that can be solved by tapping this screen. Watch this, Australia. Okay, it draws a line and it'll tell me 
The weather conditions, 61 degrees Fahrenheit, 36% relative humidity. Southeast winds at 14 miles an hour with scattered clouds. And for that DX contact over there, it'll show me their time and date. Also their grid square, Quebec Golf 1.6, and it is 9,827 miles at 266 degrees beam heading. So I know where to turn my beam, all by tapping on that. Then I talk to somebody over here in, uh, I don't know, Brazil, there we go, okay? And it'll, it'll show me right here, and it'll give me the option for long path or short path um, by you know, showing me short path there and long path, and you can cycle that to see how far, like I'm 2,208 miles at 152 degrees, degrees short path um, or how many miles it would be long path, okay? So really cool stuff, and you can see the ISS is moving here, that's updating. See it changing? So that'll be, uh, if I click on that, okay, so that'll be the ISS here uh, in about 12 hours from now. So another cool thing this thing does is monitors the beacon network. And you can see in the top right here, there's five little colored triangles. And the colored triangles, like red would be 20 meters, green would be 17 meters, blue would be 15, yellow would be 12, and purple would be 10. So those beacons, you can see the triangles over here, okay? And every, what is it, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, they, they change, okay? Watch the position of these triangles right here. Right now, that is transmitting 20 meter beacon in, I don't know, Russia. Now it's transmitting a 17 meter beacon. And then it'll change, the green one here. Now it's a 15 meter beacon, so it cycles. And that'll give you an idea when you go to that frequency and all of a sudden you hear on 12 meters da -da 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 -da, and you know, okay, that beacon right there is transmitting from Russia on 12 meters and you're hearing that so you know propagation is open. Now watch, ready? After the 10 meter cycle, it's going to switch. These are all going to move. Ready? Okay. Now that they moved over here. So that gives you an idea of the band conditions by listening to actual beacons. And that's calibrated and synchronized to the NCDXF beacon network that will tell you what beacons are transmitting on what frequencies at what times. And you'll know when the propagation is there. So if you want to make it like fancy, you can actually click the call sign here and change the colors. You could have it cycle colors, you know, like that's the, the blue there. Then I can click the background like that. See, there's the background. I don't like that. I like the background to be black. There we go. And then I'll make the call sign green. That's good. So if I wanted to change this clock right here to an analog one. I could do that if I wanted to. You know, it's funny because kids nowadays don't know how to read the hands of a clock. And there's some people I've met that only want to read the hands on a clock. They don't want to see numbers like this. So change it to an analog clock there to give you an idea what time it is for ID or whatever. And you could change the way the world map looks either as Muthal map or a word new to me, Mercator map. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Mercator, Mercator. Anyways, you can see that it, it you know shows me here in North America, my station represented in orange and the DX station represented in green, like that. So the sensor for the temperature, barometric pressure here, pressure, temperature, and humidity sensor, is an optional sensor that plugs into here. There's also an optional auto dimming sensor for lights on, lights off, it dims the display. But that sensor there you can plug in. If you don't need the extra sensor because you have a weather station indoors, then you can opt out for that. But if you want to have the temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity inside your shack, that sensor right there is what you would need to plug in. And it just simply plugs in and auto configures. Unit runs on five volts DC at one amp, so at the time of this video, I realized that they just released version 2.01 firmware. Adds a couple different things, like they added some more NOAA low earth orbit satellites 
uh, polar orbiting satellites for those weather buffs out there. And there's a video on my channel you can check out decoding uh, weather information on radio. Pretty cool stuff. The little padlock here, if you hold that, that should reset it. And I'm going to do the update to see exactly how fast this thing updates. So when you reset it, you'll see tap to recalibrate. I'm not going to do that. And tap to enter setup. But this should just reboot, connect to Wi-Fi, and ask me to update. And uh, I want to see just what the update is like. New version 2, yes. Okay, so do not interrupt power, of course. And uh, says uh, a minute or two, so we'll see what happens after. It should be pretty much automatic, I mean seamless. They also added in this firmware single button IP geolocation support. So if you don't have your uh, latitude and longitude or don't know how to enter that in in the setup for your exact location, it'll pull that information basically from your Wi-Fi or internet connection to uh, you know, uh, put your station location almost precise uh, right there. It'd probably be more precise putting it in manually, but uh, that was it. So that was the uh, update. It's going to reboot automatically, connect to Wi-Fi, and uh, we should be back in order. So there you have it, guys. It is more than just a clock. I think this thing is pretty neat. Um, I just walked through it with you together. I haven't got to really play with this. I saw it at Dayton and, and Gigaparts has them. They had it on their table. I just didn't have enough time to mess with it. This thing really is something that would, I think, add a benefit, you know, has benefits to add to your operating practice. Maybe not everybody will go and say, well, I need to look at the picture of the sun today. You know, that may not be for you. But almost everybody can utilize the live beacon network there, you know, the different beacon frequencies. Almost anybody in ham radio can use the feature where you could tap on this and get their information for weather and the beam heading, uh, even their grid square and, and stuff like that. Other than that, it's got a lot of stuff here that uh, can keep you entertained if the bands are in fact dead. You can play with this thing and uh, see exactly what your solar flux will be for the day. <laughs> I think it's got a really nice tiger maple finish here. Um, I think it's got a really colorful screen. It, it really is. I don't know if the, the video can do justice on how nice that looks. Uh, but something that I, I think I want to have on my desk, it, it'll really come in handy. And uh, it'll just, you know, if anything, it'll uh, attract people and draw attention. For those of you out there that like to make YouTube videos and show that you have every radio known to man and you got to sit in front of all the radios so that you can, you know, show how much gear you have. If that's your style, then you can have one of these on your desk as well to add to that flair. I'm not interested in broadcasting and boasting how cool it looks. I just like this thing sitting on my desk. So. Thanks for watching, 7-3. More videos on the way. Check out gigaparts.com for this. And 7-3, uh, KJ4YZI.